I love working with and talking to people who are using DSLR cameras for the very first time. There are so many decisions to make, and likewise, great discussions usually result. The real strength of a DSLR system is that the options available accept the fact that we're all looking for something a little bit different. With the same camera body, two different people could shop for entirely different accessories and end up with completely different results. Today, let's talk about flash. Your DSLR or mirrorless camera may come with a fixed flash, like this Canon PowerShot G7 here, or a pop-up flash, like this Canon Rebel T4i. The onboard flash is a part of the camera, and it's a great way to get started with flash. Some people won't use these built-in flashes at all. Some people will use them and be very happy with them, while others might not like the quality and strength of the light provided. There are limitations to the typical onboard flash. One problem is that they aren't very powerful. Another is that they are always pointed in the same direction, directly at the subject, <laughs> which isn't particularly flattering in some cases. In fact, they're actually more useful in daylight for fill flash than in darker conditions to create light when there isn't any. The advantage of the onboard flash is that it is always with you and it doesn't take up any more space than your camera. This can be a key part of incorporating a DSLR or mirrorless camera into your lifestyle. Inexpensive accessory flashes or speed lights are available, like my Nikon SB400 here. It is higher powered and more flexible than the typical pop-up flash. I can actually rotate the head here upward, which allows me to bounce the light off the ceiling. This creates just a much more natural lighting look as it comes from above and is diffused and spread as it bounces. Additionally, because it's external, it can be attached to your camera with a cord like this, allowing the light to be bounced or directed in any angle. And once the flash is off your camera, your possibilities are amazing. My Nikon V1 has a couple of accessory flashes available, like this SBN5. It doesn't pack an amazing amount of power, but the little flash head tilts and rotates in almost any direction. Finally, there are a number of full-size speed light options. These take up the most space, but offer the most flexibility. They generally take four or five AA batteries, and there are external battery packs available as well. They're a bit heavy and take up room when you're shooting, but it can really be worth it. Um, like on my SB800 here, the head tilts and swivels, various diffusers and accessories are available, and they have plenty of power. I can light up a completely dark room with this older SB800 here. The next level after using one of these on and off camera is to use multiple speed lights. In fact, with the latest systems, they can all talk to the camera wirelessly and help you set up the perfect shot. Some, like my SB800s here, can work as slave lighting too, where each will flash instantly when they see another speed light or strobe flash. This allows you to set up intricate studio lighting scenes with just a few of these and no wires. As you can see, the word flash can take on many different meanings, from the small flash built into this point and shoot camera, through the mid-range options, all the way through using one or more of these larger speed lights.